When it comes to fighting invasive plant species, you need all the allies you can get. Humans are fine, I guess, but the real pros team up with beetles. Like our next guest, Carrie Mentier. In the wilds of Florida, something sinister lurks. A relentless invader, choking native plants and destroying delicate ecosystems. They call this biological menace the air potato. Okay, so the name isn't that scary, but this invasive plant is a real problem. Stopping the air potato vine will take some serious science, and that's why we need entomologists like Carrie Mintier. She fights invasive plants at the University of Florida with the help of some tiny friends, bugs. So I was getting my master's degree studying botany. I wanted to be able to control invasive plants a more environmentally friendly way. And so I took a biological control class and completely fell in love with insects at that point. And so that's the moment when I knew what I wanted to do. When I was a kid, I definitely didn't like to be dirty. I didn't like bugs. I love bugs now. They're definitely my favorite organism. This is the air potato vine? This is the air potato vine. Does that have a scientific name or is that just what everybody calls it? It does, are you ready for it? It's Dioscorea bulbifera. It is literally everywhere. As you can see, these vines are crawling over our trees here. Yeah. And if these are left unchecked, they can actually kill these trees. Invasive species have plagued Florida since the 1800s, when it was in fashion for travelers to return from foreign trips with exotic plants. The air potato made its way here in 1905 as a potential food crop. It turned out to be toxic, and with no natural predators, the air potato slowly spread throughout Florida and beyond. And that's exactly what invasive plants do. They come in and they grow much faster than our native plants do. But you have a way of, of fixing this, right? What we do is called biological control. And so it's we use biological organisms or living organisms mm -hmm. to control these plant species. And so I've brought with me uh, some beetles. All the way from Liverpool. Oh, no. <laughs> Not quite Liverpool, but also Asia. <laughs> oh. So just like the vine. While the beetles from Liverpool brought timeless pop hits and shaggy haircuts, Air potato leaf beetles bring an insatiable hunger for dangerous plants. Where are their screaming fans? How do they keep up with the, the growth of this plant? With the beetles, they grow much more slowly because they have to then spend energy protecting themselves against the beetle damage. And these insects make more beetles. And so it's not just the 25 insects that are in here. Soon we'll have thousands of insects out here. What's the next step? Well, we need to put the beetles on the air potato vine so that they can eat. You see them here, they're, yep. they're getting ready. They're ready to eat. Yep. And we're just gonna give, put them on their food just source. Just give them a meal. They're kind of like ladybugs. Ladybugs without the spots. Yeah. But unlike ladybugs, these guys eat air potato. Have a feast. Left alone, the air potato plant can grow up to eight inches in a single day, quickly overwhelming other plants and trees. But the beetles stop the vine in its tracks damaging the leaves and slowing its growth. But how does Carrie know for certain that these hungry insects won't go rogue, devouring native plants instead of the air potato? That's the kind of question she answers at her special containment lab. Here, you have an air potato vine mm -hmm. on the left. Mm -hmm. This vine here is a philodendron. They look, they could be sisters. They could be sisters, right? And so, as a human being, these might be really hard to tell apart. Yeah. But beetles, on the other hand, are the best botanists on the planet. These insects have been in this cage for several days now. We have feeding on the air potato vine. They've done some work, yeah. And there's not a single hole on this yeah. philodendron because they don't recognize this plant as food. You always pick similar plants or you try everything? So we start off with the most closely related plants. So like if if plants were like in a family, so all their sister plants, their parent plants, their cousin plants, yeah. and then um, move out from there. Because if they're gonna feed on anything else, they're gonna feed on something that's most closely related. Like sure. you probably look a lot like your sister or your brother, right. but don't look so much like. My neighbor, Jed. Right. So yeah. this is why we have to be able to do these tests to make sure that they will only eat air potato. What happens when you find out, okay, like we've done a lot of tests, These. These bugs really seem to like air potato vines. What are we doing with that information? 
So we have to basically pitch our case to the USDA. Oh, and wow. so the USDA scientists and um, other federal and state level scientists review our work. Yeah. And then we are issued a release permit and then we can take these insects out into the environment and release them so that they can do their job. So thanks to Carrie, Florida's ecosystem is healthier and these hungry beetles have their dream job. We all should be so lucky.